on Mountain News at 5.30, a KSP sergeant is suing the agency, claiming they retaliated against her. Plus, the search continues for a Southern Kentucky man nearly a year after he was last seen. Plus, we stay dry tonight, but showers are likely by Sunday. All those details coming up as Mountain News at 5.30 starts right now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Olivia Calfi. Steve has the day off. A Kentucky State Police Sergeant is suing the agency. The suit claims KSP retaliated against Sergeant Vicki Day after she reported their misuse of federal grant money. Samantha Valentino has the details of the case. This lawsuit was filed in April on behalf of KSP Sergeant Vicki Day. It makes several claims, including that Kentucky State Police violated Kentucky's Whistleblower Act. This all started with a trip to El Paso, Texas last year from June the 5th to June the 8th. Sergeant Day's attorney, Thomas Clay, says concerns were raised about some of the things that happened on that trip to Texas. According to the lawsuit, in November of 2022, Sergeant Day made a protected disclosure to Justice and Public Safety Cabinet Investigator Kat Reed about illegal and perhaps criminal violations regarding the trip. In the suit, Sergeant Day alleges the trip had no legitimate law enforcement justification. It was ostensibly for training for these individuals who flew down to El Paso. But as far as we've been able to ascertain, there was no training conducted. Sergeant Day also alleges the trip was funded illegally with money from a federal grant. It's my understanding it came for a grant uh, that was awarded to KSP for drug training. And there are real questions about whether that grant money was spent properly or not. Clay says four KSP command staff members and four female civilian employees went on the trip. According to the suit, the trip cost approximately $26,000. There's been, in my view, retaliation against Sergeant Day for raising concerns about what happened on that trip and the fact that there were irregularities in the funding of that trip what the purpose of the trip was. The suit claims KSP retaliated against Sergeant Day by proposing to discipline her with two Class C violations, which are currently pending, and argues that KSP's attempt to silence Sergeant Day appears to violate Kentucky state law. In a statement to WKYT, Communications Director for the Justice and Public Safety Cabinet, Morgan Hall, said, quote, the 2022 training in El Paso was for legitimate law enforcement purposes. KSP does not retaliate against employees for raising concerns or reporting misconduct. In an answer filed in Sergeant Day's case, KSP denied the allegations and asked for the lawsuit to be dismissed. The lawsuit says the trip to Texas and its, and its expenses were approved by KSP Commissioner Philip Burnett and the governor's office. Court records indicate Commissioner Burnett will be deposed in the case next week. One person has died while three others were injured in a shooting in South Carolina last night. Officers responded to a call around 8.30 p.m. for a report of multiple people shot in the North Charleston area. A police spokesperson with the North, North Charleston Police Department says a 19-year-old man was pronounced dead at the scene. The police report says a 59-year-old man and a boy were also injured in the shooting and found lying in the parking lot. The fourth victim, an 18-year-old woman, later showed up at the hospital with a gunshot wound. Boston police say they're investigating possible gunshots through windows at a high-profile sports venue. At least three shattered windows are visible at TD Garden. It's home to the Boston Bruins and Celtics and has a transit station. Police say they do not know if the damage was from a BB gun or more serious firearm. No injuries have been reported at this time. Donald Trump has become the first ever former president to face federal criminal charges. The indictment comes as Trump is in full campaign mode to win re-election to the White House. CBS's Natalie Brand has more details from Washington, D.C. The Department of Justice has unsealed the 49-page indictment issued by a federal grand jury in Miami against former President Donald Trump. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. 
Special Counsel Jack Smith detailed the charges, which include unlawful retention of national defense information, obstruction, conspiracy, and false statements. Prosecutors say Trump shared a highly sensitive Pentagon plan of attack to visitors at his golf club in New Jersey and was recorded on tape admitting it had not been declassified. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States and they must be enforced. The criminal case against the former president stems from the 15-month effort by the federal government to retrieve records he had at his Mar-a-Lago estate. During a search of the property last August, federal investigators seized more than 300 records, including classified documents and some marked top secret. Trump calls the case the boxes hoax. His first court appearance is scheduled for Tuesday in Miami. They come after me. Because now we're leading in the polls again by a lot against Biden and against the Republicans by a lot. The case will play out as GOP presidential primary season heats up with Trump already fundraising off the indictment. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. An aide to former President Trump, William Nada, a retired Navy veteran, has also been indicted for his role in moving the documents. We are still live in Bell County for the Laurel Cove Music Festival and the weather is fantastic here in Pineville as the weather continues to be fantastic. Really across the mountains right now. Here's a live look as we go over to portions of Eastern Kentucky as you can see from Pikeville, from the Pikeville Medical Center. Well, back to Buffalo Mountain too, looking at plenty of sunshine, but also some haze back in the distance as well as those wildfires continue in Canada and that hazy sky will continue across the mountains as we go into this evening. Those current temperatures in the 70s, 73 over in Pikeville, a few clouds back in the distance, but overall, a very nice evening is on tap across our region, and those temperatures will continue to be nice as we go into this evening as well. Most of us in the middle to upper 70s, 77 for Somerset, 78 for London, 76 in Jackson, 75 over in Grundy at this hour, and those temperatures, like I said, will continue to be very nice as we go into tonight. On radar, we are dry thanks to high pressure. And that will also continue as we go into tonight as well. And really for the first half of your weekend, we stay dry, but those rain chances are not far away. As you can see tonight, though, we fall into the middle to upper 50s. If you have any plans to come out to the Laurel Cove Music Festival, you may need the light jacket as we stay dry under that clear sky. But like I said, Olivia, some rain chances are on the way. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Cameron. A Southern Kentucky family is getting help from an out of state search crew known for finding lost people. The Cajun Coast search and rescue crew out of Louisiana will be in Kentucky next week to look for several missing people. One of them is Ricky Griffiths, who was last seen in Pulaski County. He lived with his family in Wayne County. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has the latest from a family with many questions, but few answers. Our family has found out all the information we have found out. It has been almost one year since Alice Mabe has seen her son. We should have found him before now. Ricky Griffiths was last seen sometime around the July 4th holiday. Mabe says several days later came some strange text messages from his phone. And then the discovery of his car, his phone, and his wallet. 11 months later, he's still missing. But God's put a lot of good people in my life. My children, my daughters, my grandchildren. Has it inspired me not not to sit and dwell on what went if because God's going to show us where he's at. She says the past few weeks have brought forth some new answers and word that the Cajun Coast Search and Rescue Team will be helping. They plan to arrive early next week. Even if these people come and don't find him, it's in God's time, but I feel like they will. She says mistakes have been made and wishes things could have been done differently in the search. But she says many have given so much in what has been such a trying time these past 11 months. I just want to get the community. We haven't had, we've had prayers and we got people praying every day and I'm so thankful for them. And I'm for, so thankful they're ones that care. And I'm, a, you know, I have to forgive the ones that's hindered. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office says foul play is a strong possibility in the case. It says four polygraphs have been conducted, but few firm leads. In Wayne County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. 
Tony Wade with the Cajun Coast Search and Rescue says they will be looking for Griffiths and possibly several other missing people while in Kentucky. He says they are operating almost entirely on donations. The prime suspect in the 2005 disappearance of Natalie Holloway pleaded not guilty to extortion and wire fraud charges in a Birmingham federal courtroom where he denied a translator. Joran Vandersloot was extradited to the U.S. from a Peruvian prison on an unrelated murder conviction. Prosecutors in the U.S. case claimed the Dutch national tried to extort $250,000 from the Holloway family in exchange for information about the location of the young woman's body, which turned out to be false. We were just really happy that this day has happened and Beth has worked so hard um, for years to get him on the soil in Alabama and to get him in a position where he can, you know, go, we can find some justice for what happened to Natalie. It's very emotional for everyone, but there's a real sense of relief and we're happy about this. Beth Holloway was among those in the courtroom today. Her daughter disappeared on the Caribbean island of Aruba when she was just 18 years old and her body has never been found.